twilight is upon us. Again, another week comes. And there's another mass shooting. This time at a church in Alabama. So another week, more hatred, more wickedness. I tell y'all again that the times that we are living in today, they are just different. Yes, we have had some dark times in the past. I mean, on, on this day, whether you realize it or not, we are actually observing Juneteenth. The day that commemorates the end of slavery. More hatred and more wickedness that is in our past. Now, slavery of that kind, it does not exist here today. However, I would tell you that slavery of another kind is ever present in our world today. And I want you to know today that the slavery of that that kind is grip. It is growing ever tighter. And at the same time, it is spreading. It is growing rapidly. Mankind is in the bondage of wickedness. Mankind is in the bondage of hatred. And that bondage, I tell you today that it is spreading rapidly. So again, I tell you that twilight is upon us. I tell you that darkness is growing more and more and night is beginning to settle in. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. When morning comes, I want you to understand that the light that rises will not be the light of the sun. It will be the light that emanates from the glory of our Lord. What I want you to understand in this scenario is that the new day that approaches is the day of the Lord. And in the day of the Lord, his light will shine on both the wicked and those who are of hate. It will shine on sin and in that light, they will be judged of their hatred. They will be judged of their wickedness. In that light, I want you to understand that sin will be judged. Yeah, yeah. To some, the day of the Lord will be a good day. Mm -hmm. But to many others, the day of the Lord will be a terrible day. Mm -hmm. It will be a frightening day. Mm -hmm. So as darkness begins to settle in over this world, I want you to understand that true believers, we should move with a sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. We cannot be fearful of these hours. We cannot be fearful of these days that we now live in. As we saw last week, now is the time that we should be ever watchful in prayer. Mm -hmm. Now is the time that we as true believers, we should be wise we should be humble and we should be moving with fervent love about us. Here in our key verse today, we see that Paul encourages us as children of the Lord, living in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. He encourages us to shine, to shine as lights, he says there. So in other words, now is the time for all of us to be a beacon of hope in the growing darkness of night so that all of those who are around us, all of those who become lost and are currently lost mm -hmm. can find their way. Come on, come on, come on. In his second letter to the Thessalonians, Paul, he, he took a moment to write about the coming of the Lord. He took a moment to talk about the days of the darkest nights for the world. Mm -hmm. In this passage of scripture from the second chapter of Thessalonians, from the first down through the 12th verse, we see that Paul stated that the day of the Lord would not come unless a couple of things would take place first. Mm -hmm. 
In the third verse there, we will first see that Paul said that the day of the Lord will not come unless a falling away takes place. Mm -hmm. This falling away, we know as the great apostasy and we have focused on, we have talked about this before in the past. Now this falling away, it speaks to the total departure from faith in the Lord. This departure, I want you to understand it begins when the church, that is again, all of those who have truly and genuinely believed in the Lord. This departure begins when we are called out of this world by Christ and we are carried away with him. We know this as the rapture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After the rapture, the day will eventually come when there will be a total departure from faith in the Lord. And in that day, this world, it will plunge into total darkness. Mm -hmm. It will plunge into darkness. I want you to understand not physically, but spiritually. And there will be great tribulation Mm -hmm. in those darkest of days. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want you to understand here today in this moment in time, the church is ever present in our world. So as Paul said there in scripture, we should not be deceived into believing that the day of the Lord has already come. Mm -hmm. It has not come yet. Mm -hmm. However, if you simply take a look around at our world today as it is, Mm -hmm. the signs of such a falling away are clearly, they are already present all around us today. It, I tell you today, it is clear that a departure from faith in the Lord is happening today. Again, I tell you that though we are not living in total darkness yet, mm-hmm. twilight is upon us. Mm-hmm. What are we, the true believers, we to do in these twilight hours in that same passage of scripture there from the second chapter of second Thessalonians, we see that Paul wrote again that the day of the Lord in that same verse will not come until the revelation of the man of sin, the son of perdition. Now, to know who the son of perdition is, Mm -hmm. I believe that we need to first take a look at who his father is. To the Jews that stood in opposition to him, Jesus, at one point in time, he likened them to being like their father Mm -hmm. who does not stand in truth because truth, the truth, it is not in him. Jesus then said of this father that he is a liar and that he is the father of it, the it being lies. Mm -hmm. Jesus there in the eighth chapter in the 44th verse of John's gospel, he plainly tells us of the father of perdition. And he tells us that the father of perdition is the devil. It is Satan. The great adversary of us, the great adversary who still opposes the Lord today. Like his father, the son of perdition will also oppose mankind. Like his father, the son of perdition will also oppose the Lord And we're told that in second Thessalonians, the second chapter in the third and the fourth verse, Mm -hmm. that the son of perdition will exalt himself like he is God during those days of great tribulation. In doing this, the son of perdition, like his father, will deceive the world. Mm -hmm. Now, we know the son of perdition. We know him under another name. The name that John used in his first epistle 
we know him as the Antichrist. Now, again, I want you to understand something about the times in which we live in now. Now, we aren't living in the days of great tribulation. We aren't living in those days of total darkness. However, again, I tell you that the signs of those days are already present around us. They are present in our world. In fact, John wrote in his first epistle that the spirit of Antichrist, it is already present in our world and it is already doing works that opposes the Lord. Again, I tell you today that twilight is upon us. And again, I ask, what are we? the true believers, what are we to do in these hours? The days of the great tribulation will be the darkest days that this world will ever see. Uh Uh And in those days, there will be little that can be done. With it being twilight for us, with it being the twilight hours, Uh what this means for us is that there's actually still time for something to be done. Mm -hmm. There's still just a little light. Mm -hmm. There is still time for those that live with wickedness in their hearts, that live with hatred and animosity in their hearts. There's still time for them to be able to turn to the Lord before night settles in Mm -hmm. and before the morning comes. To speak in terms that some of you may understand, when I was a little kid, when the street lights turned on, it meant it was time to start getting inside. I want you to understand today that the street lights are starting to come on. And dad is waiting for us to come home. You see, I, I was one of I was one of those kids, and she can testify to this. I could stay outside all day and I could play all day as well. But I knew my dad's rules and I knew her rules as well. In other words, I knew that I couldn't go away from the house, but I also knew when it was time for me to get my butt inside. You see, I I didn't want dad to have to come and get me. Because dad coming and getting me was a scary sight. (laughs) I think the last thing that any of us want is for dad to have to come and to get us today. (laughs) The last thing that any of us want is to have angry dad, angry dad coming out and getting us and bringing us home. Dad, I want you to understand in this scenario is God. That's the last one that I want to be angry at me. So these are the hours where we, the children of God, we who know better, we should be the responsible ones. We should be the ones that start telling others that it's time for us to start making our way home to God because it is twilight and the street lights are starting to come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, some would much rather stay outside and they would much rather keep on playing into the night hours. In other words, they would rather be Mm hard-headed. They would rather be disobedient. So for us who know better, Mm -hmm. who desire to be responsible in our world today, it can be quite difficult for us to be that responsible kid that's trying to to tell us, hey, I got to go home. Mm -hmm. I don't want dad to be mad at me and you better go home as well. Mm -hmm. You see, nobody as a child ever wanted to be that kid. We, ne- we never wanted to be the, the goody two-shoes, if you will. 
Because that kid was always mocked and, and, and poked at and made fun of. However, I would tell you today that now is the time for the believer not to think that way. We should not be concerned about being mocked, about being laughed at because we know better and we desire to be responsible. Now is not the time for us to be disobedient, if you will. Now is time for the true believer to be the responsible ones in the growing darkness of the twilight hours. Last week we saw that we as true believers, we are to move with fervent love. That's what Peter told us to do. Paul, we will see here, say in the second chapter of Philippians today, we'll see that in what he says here that he touched more on the thought of the believer being a light bearer, that is a beacon of hope to the Philippians and therefore to us as well today. So what I want to to do here is I want to show you what we are to do as true believers. Mm -hmm. Because there was a question, what do we do in these hours? Mm -hmm. And I want to show you here what we ought to be doing in these twilight hours to Mm -hmm. be responsible and to help all of those who are around us in the growing darkness that is clearly present in our world. Mm -hmm. Now, just as Peter encouraged, we will see Paul there encouraging the fifth verse of the second chapter of Philippians, he encouraged the believer to let the mind be in us, which was also in Christ. It comes up again for us here. Mm -hmm. Paul, he reminds us that Christ was again humble. And there in the eighth verse, we will see that, that Paul reminds us that Christ was obedient. Paul tells us that that Christ was obedient to the point of death, Mm -hmm. even the death of the cross. Now, let us take a moment to consider that statement there, because this statement is a powerful statement, whether you realize it or not. We, We need to understand this statement so that we ourselves can understand again the mindset of Christ, because again, we are told clearly that we as true believers, we have to carry this mindset in our world. So understanding this mind of Christ here, we see that Christ again was humble. So there's humility here. So Christ is humility. Let us understand. Let us consider that Christ who was holy, he came from eternity to this world of sin. And by living in this world of sin, he who was holy, he suffered. Christ, again, Paul said, was obedient. Mm -hmm. So Christ's obedience here. What he speaks of here is that Christ was obedient to the point of death to carry out the Father's will. So Jesus was obedient to the Father's will. This makes us again bring up the Father's will here. The will of the Father is for mankind to not die in darkness. Do you hear me? I want you to understand that God does not desire to lose anyone. He does not desire for anyone to be lost in darkness and then die in darkness. Now, in order for us to to not die in darkness, the father had to do something. The father gave his son as a sacrifice for all of us. We know that very well. Come on, come on. So Jesus, we should understand, Jesus did not come to the world to live. Jesus came to the world to die. That's right. You got it now. Come on. 
let us understand that, that Jesus, he did not have to give himself for us. But he gave himself to everyone. Jesus being holy, he humbled himself in, in living in this wretched world, this, this world of sin, and he obediently carried out the will of his father. Guess what? As Christ gave himself for us, the Lord desires that we live for one another. See, I tell you today that there is a cross that, that we as true believers, there is a cross that we must bear in order to follow Christ. Come on. Come on. In bearing our cross, we will share in his sufferings. In which Peter said that we should rejoice. Mm -hmm. Peter said that we should rejoice in our sufferings for Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So have, have we not been commissioned with the task from Christ to carry out the will of the Lord? Mm -hmm. God, he, he, he commanded us yeah, yeah. to share the good news. Mm -hmm. he, he commanded us to share this good news so that it can save others. So, so in other words, mm -hmm. God has commanded us to give ourselves to all of those who are around us. Yeah. Are you giving yourself to all of those who are around you today? In these twilight hours, mm -hmm. are you living for all of those who are around you? Who are we to not humble ourselves in the same manner that Christ humbled himself? Who are we not to humble ourselves? A creature born in and of sin when Christ humbled himself and he was holy. Who are we to make the choice not to obediently carry out the Lord's will when he has saved us? What are we saying? Are we better than Jesus? Right. You see, in these twilight hours, the world needs the light that resides in you. It needs that light more than it ever has before. Someone out there needs some hope today. There's a lot of hope needed in these twilight hours as wickedness and hatred continues to abound and as darkness continues to, to spread and, and continues to grow. I tell you today that we ought not keep that light from those who need that light. We ought not keep that hope from those who need that hope. We should be giving of ourselves in these twilight hours. So Paul, we will see in the 12th verse there, he encouraged the believer to live in a way that gives meaning to our salvation. Mm -hmm. We should work out our own salvation, Paul said, with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. From this encouragement from Paul, I would ask you again, are you giving meaning to the salvation you have received from the Lord? Right. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Are you giving meaning to the salvation that you have received? Mm -hmm. I feel like this is a very important question for us as believers to answer today. What are you doing with your salvation? Mm -hmm. What are you doing with it? Right. Are you sitting on it? Are you doing nothing with the salvation that you have received from God? Jesus, he encouraged us through his teaching to the Jews that we should labor, that we should work for the food which endures to everlasting life. This labor, Jesus tells us, is to believe in him whom the father had sent. 
As you have heard me say before, faith, it does not sit still. Faith, as you have heard me say before, it does not sit down. Faith, it is always in motion. Yeah. Faith, it is always on the go. Faith, it is always doing good. Faith, it is always doing something that is beneficial mm -hmm. for all people. Mm -hmm. Pauly then encouraged us. He encouraged us to give meaning to our salvation there in the 14th verse by doing good without complaining and disputing. Think about that. God did not grumble or complain when he gave the world his only begotten son. So when we are giving meaning to our salvation, carrying out the task that we have been commissioned to do by Christ, we should do it without complaint. We should do it without disputing. We should do it rejoicing in our soul. We should rejoice in being a light for someone somewhere. We should rejoice in being a beacon of hope for someone somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the question often arises as to what good are we, the true believers? What good are we supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. This question, it always arises. Throughout scripture, we have shown the labor, the good we do. We're shown that it begins with love. Mm -hmm. As we saw in our key verse from last week's sermon, Peter said that we should move with fervent love for all of those who are around us. Mm -hmm. The beacon of hope that should emanate from the believer comes from the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, which dwells in us, the Holy Spirit that is God. Mm -hmm. God is love. God is fervent love. That is what is a part of us as true believers. We are taught that we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Y'all have heard me say that a million times. This love is to be given not to some people. It is to be given to all people that even includes those who are our enemies this even includes those who curse us. This even includes those who hate us. Now, because God loves all people and resides in us through the inner dwelling of the Holy Spirit, that is the love that shall pour out from our soul. That is the love today in these twilight hours that should be pouring out from all of those who truly believe in the Lord. Our love, I want you to know today, our love, it should be compassionate. Our love, it should be merciful. That's the Lord's love. God's love is compassionate. God's love is merciful. With this love, we are to be prayerful for, for those we love. And again, with this love, we are to be prayerful for those that spitefully use us and even those that persecute us. Yeah, yeah. With this compassionate love, the believer ought to be merciful. The believer ought to be forgiving. Just as the Lord was merciful and forgiving of all of us, in our wickedness, when we were filled with sin, when we ourselves was making up the darkness. I don't know if you hear me here today. You see, right now, this very moment, there are believers that are rolling their eyes at hearing that. That they should be loving those that hate them, that would curse them. That they should be prayerful for those that would spitefully use them and persecute them. There is a believer right now who is sick to their stomach at hearing that. Mm -hmm. There are so many believers who today scoff at the idea of loving the groups of people that Jesus has encouraged us to love. I tell you today that it is a terrible thing when the one who has professed to have faith in the Lord is the one adding to darkness. 
because love is not in them. I tell you, it is a terrible thing when one who has professed to believe in the Lord finds the idea of loving all people to be ridiculous. How can we show others the way? How can we be a beacon of hope when we are not acting out of faith ourselves? It makes you wonder. In the book of Isaiah, it is said, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall be as the noonday. So in other words, we should be caring. We should be caring for each other in these twilight hours Mm -hmm. as darkness grows. In his letter, James encouraged us to visit orphans and widows and to also care for the sick. When Jesus spoke about his judgment of the nations in the day that he comes, he spoke of how he would judge on how we care for one another. So did we care for those who are less fortunate than we are? Did we care for the hungry? Did we care for the thirsty? Did we care for the stranger? Did we care for the naked? Did we care for the sick? Did we, as those who have proclaimed to be true believers, did we care for all people? Did we move with fervent love? Admittedly, there are many believers that struggle with being a beacon of hope in this world Mm -hmm. in these twilight hours. For example, it can be difficult to love those that that curse, that hate you. I'm not foolish. I know how hard it can be to love someone that can't stand your guts. Mm -hmm that hate you because of who you are. It can be again difficult to be prayerful for those that spitefully use you and for those that persecute you. I'm no fool. I know how hard it can be to love your enemy and even pray for your enemy. Immediately again, it can be difficult carrying the weight of being a light in this wretched world. Again, admittedly, it can be a heavy weight to carry of being a beacon of hope for all people, including those who are filled with anger and hatred, and they would rather see your lights go out. I want to say something to the church today. That is to all of us who truly believe. Mm -hmm. Our commission from Christ does not fall on just one single person. Mm -hmm. Yes, through Christ, we certainly have the strength to be able to bear loving those that curse us, Mm -hmm. those who hate us. Mm -hmm. It is possible to do these things through Christ that strengthens us. Yes, through the strength of Christ, we can be both prayerful and merciful to those that spitefully use us and to those that even persecute us. We can do these things because we have God in us. We have the strength of Christ bearing us alone. Mm -hmm. However, all of us as true believers, I want you to understand today, we should all be taking part in this labor. It does not fall on just one person. It falls on all of us. All of us should be laboring together in these twilight hours to be lights in this world, to be beacons of hope in this world. To the Corinthians, Paul said that by an equality at this time, mm-hmm. our abundance should supply the lack of others who partake in this great labor right. in these days, mm-hmm. who may be lacking. Mm-hmm. 
And at other times, when we ourselves are lacking, mm -hmm. when we are not up to the task, when we are not up to par, when we are down on ourselves, but others who are taking part in this labor, mm -hmm. they happen to be up good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paul said that their great abundance should supply us our need as well, and that their supply should lift us up as well. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we are to help one another in this mission. In other words, during these twilight hours, we are to be a light. We are to be a beacon of hope for other believers as well. Because again, all of us are dealing with this struggle. There again is so much struggle in our world today where we as believers, we ought not be an adversary to one another. We should be helping lift each other up so that all of us can go out in this darkness and shine as lights to all of those that are around us. In other words, we are to help one another. We should all bear this burden together because being a light in this world is not an easy task. And being that beacon of hope, we should be preaching God's gospel throughout this world. And I tell you today that we should all be doing that together. Because the Lord is everyone's greatest hope. And I tell you today that he needs to be known throughout our world. He needs to be known by all people. We should preach about the Lord's call. We should preach about his call to stop wandering around in the dark because God don't want you wandering around in the dark. God don't want anybody to be wandering around in the dark. Amen. God does not want anybody to be wandering around in the dark with no hope. He wants them to turn to him. So we should shine our light on him. We should shine our light on his salvation. We should, in other words, then therefore be preaching about God's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. We should be preaching about in these twilight hours, we should be preaching about God's mercy. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, we should be preaching about his love. Mm -hmm. Let us preach that the Lord is a refuge. Mm -hmm. Let us preach in these twilight hours that, that God is a fortress. Let us preach in this day and age that God is a comforter, that he is a great help in times of need. You are that beacon of hope for the world to see. I want you to know today. And I want you to know today that Jesus said those words himself about you. From his mouth, Jesus said that you are a light of the world. Jesus, he likened us true believers to being like a city that sits on top of a hill whose light cannot be hidden in the twilight hours. Mm -hmm. During these twilight hours, when the sun has nearly set, our light should still be seen as the light of a city that is brightly shining. In that light of that city, it should be beautiful. Yeah that others desire to go to and to visit. Mm -hmm. Jesus encouraged us. He said, let your light shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good, mm -hmm. that they may see your good works mm -hmm. and glorify your father in heaven. Mm -hmm. Let your light shine in these twilight hours. Yeah. Yeah. Don't try to hide your light from anyone. Paul, again, in our key verse for today, he encouraged the believer to do their best to strive, to do their best to strive to be without fault yeah. in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Last week I said that we're living in the midst of wickedness. Again, today we should strive to be without fault in the midst of wickedness. We should be the responsible ones. We know our Lord's rules and we ought not be ashamed about keeping his rules and upholding others to those rules as well. 
We ought not be ashamed of being the obedient ones. We ought not be ashamed of being the goody two shoes. Mm -hmm. We should be setting the example in these hours. Again, in our key verse, Paul encouraged us to strive to be without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom we shine as lights in the world. It may seem like there is a light of weight being placed on our shoulders now to be someone's hope, mm -hmm. to be a light in our world. It may seem like a lot of weight is being placed on your shoulders. Yet I tell you that we can bear this weight. We can bear this weight with the help of each other, but we can also, and most importantly, we can bear it with the help of our Lord. The Lord has not placed the task on us that we are unable to bear. We can do it. I know that we can do it because God said we can. Even though the world may be growing darker and darker, our light, the light of the believer, I tell you today, it should be growing brighter and brighter. The light of the believer in these twilight hours, it should be growing stronger and stronger. In this world of darkness, it seems that most of the examples that others are, are following in are the examples of the wicked ones. We know that these ways, the ways of the wicked, they only lead to destruction. They lead down a slippery path, as we saw in our Sunday school lesson today. Solomon said, however, that the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. The light of the just, it is life. The light of the just, it is health to all who will follow the way. So I encourage you today, I encourage you the same as Jesus encouraged us. Let your light shine. Let your light shine for others to see. Let us be that beacon of hope that show others the way in which they should go during these twilight hours, during these hours of looming darkness. Again, let us be that beacon of hope. Amen. 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 Amen.